There is no doubt that humans have left their indelible mark upon the world, and discoveries and announcements are made every day that both shock and amaze us. Whether it is the evidence of a historic shipwreck, a strange illness, or even the next steps in space exploration, we are constantly exploring, discovering, and learning. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be looking at three exciting recent discoveries and why you might want to care more about them. Mexican Mangrove Forest is Trapped in Time I am sure most of us are familiar with time capsules. Whether you buried a tin stuffed with newspapers, coins and other treasures as a child, or you watched them get dug up on TV. Now though, it appears that Mother Nature has made a time capsule of her own, preserving a forest of red mangroves in the Yucatan Peninsula, Mexico, in time. Visiting this forest is like turning back the clock by a staggering 100,000 years. We typically see red mangroves, also known by their biological name as Rhizophora mangroves, along tropical coastlines, not because they are enjoying a beachside getaway, but because they can only grow in salt water, making these hot coastal areas the perfect spot to grow. However, this particular mangrove forest can be found near the San Pedro River in Tabasco, a staggering 200 kilometers away from the closest ocean. This ecological puzzle has left questions for many scientists, though a team of researchers from all over the world, covering a broad range of specialist areas of study, think they may have found an answer. An answer that transports us back to 125,000 years in the past. The lead author of this research, Octavio Alberto Oropisa, a marine ecologist working at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography at the University of California, San Diego, described the mangrove ecosystem as having been trapped in time for more than 100,000 years. He elaborated, describing the research as piecing a lost world back together. To begin unraveling the mystery as to how the coastal saltwater plants ended up in a freshwater environment so far from the coast, the researchers took DNA samples from the trees to be analysed. This aimed to find some key differences between this freshwater mangrove forest and the more regular mangrove trees. Evolutionary geneticist at Queen Mary University of London, Richard Nichols, though not involved with the study, explained that by counting the differences in the genome sequences between the saltwater and freshwater mangrove samples, it would be possible to estimate how long it has been since the two trees had a common ancestor. In this particular research, Nichols explained that the genome mutations appeared at a rate of one in every 300 million letters of genetic code. However, if you are finding the common ancestor between two sample groups, it must come before the two groups split from one another. The research team manages to determine, using the method that looks at the number of genetic mutations in the mangrove's DNA, that it has been approximately 125,000 years since these mangroves became isolated from the nearest coastal mangroves. But we have still not talked about why this strange ecological phenomenon has occurred. The current theories assume that this is due to global warming, and that once upon a time, the now landlocked state of Yucatan was once along the coastline. Global warming and the changes in our sea levels have been a point of concern for years and years. Though in more modern discussions, we have talked about sea levels rising, and the sea level has fluctuated up and down many times throughout the Earth's past. This complicated phenomenon is partly due to small shifts in the Earth's orbit around the Sun, impacting the amount of solar radiation we receive. When we have the least amount of solar radiation, the Earth falls into an ice age. When we hit the maximum radiation, we have an interglacial period, causing the ice sheets from the ice age to melt away, increasing the sea level in our oceans. Since the last interglacial period ended approximately 120,000 years ago, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, meaning the timeline does line up with the mangrove forest. The working theory is that when the ice sheets melted during the interglacial period, the sea levels rose enough to bring the coastline to Yucatan, allowing saltwater plants such as mangroves to grow. Once the sea levels then dropped again, the once coastal city became entirely land-based, far from the sea, leaving these coastal plants stranded in the middle of the country. 
Despite this theory seeming to make a lot of sense, to answer our questions, there is one problem. The mangrove forest currently sits 30 feet above sea level, and the models we have to estimate the sea levels from the period do not reflect this drastic a change. This means that even in the last interglacial period, the mangrove forest would not have been covered by the sea. It is hoped that this research can help feed into more accurate predictions as to how the changes in sea level due to climate change will impact the future development of the area. We still have lots of questions and speculation surrounding this mangrove forest. Even if the changes in sea levels give us an explanation, we still do not know how the plants all managed to successfully adapt to the freshwater conditions. There is still a large window for future development and research, though these exciting bits of analysis are huge strides forward for now, adding one more piece to the puzzle at a time. Tesla want to make humanoid robots A robot uprising is part of many sci-fi and dystopia classics, though with the robots that are being developed, from Alexa to more complex AI, some are worried that it will not be long before this terrifying trope is part of our lives. This is not helped by the 2021 announcement that Tesla is working on a Teslabot, a humanoid robot that Elon Musk claims could have a working prototype by 2022. Musk has said that the Teslabot will take care of chores and jobs that us humans just are not fans of. As he continued to describe the robot, he said the AI technology that goes into the Teslabot will be the same used in the cars, though this humanoid will be decked out with an intricate camera setup to keep an eye on what is going on in the world. A frankly, quite unnerving design is going to be about 1.7 meters tall. Musk has said that the robot is intended to be friendly. While in the world of AI there may not be definite answers nor a great deal of certainty, the intended does not fill us with a great deal of reassurance. The purpose of the robots is to take off of our hands the jobs that we just do not want to do. These were described by Musk as those that are dangerous, repetitive, and boring. The idea is that any physical work will eventually become optional, thanks to the Teslabot. A function that looks as though it could be featured is the ability for the robot to understand simple instructions, such as picking up groceries for you. Musk hopes that the Teslabot could even fill the labor gap though others are concerned about jobs being taken away from humans in need of work. Of course, the Tesla cars themselves have not come without criticism, with many questioning the capabilities of the self-driving features, following the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration claiming to have identified 11 crashes being the fault of the Tesla cars hitting emergency services vehicles that were parked in the road. One incident resulted in a fatality and in total 17 injuries. Despite these incidents, Musk maintains his view that the Tesla self-driving system is safer than humans on the road. Whatever your personal opinion is, I am sure you can understand the concerns of those wary about the Tesla AI in cars, never mind the same system being used to create humanoids allegedly capable of taking jobs over for us. The world of AI is controversial as it is though the work of Tesla and Elon Musk himself has caused an even greater divide, with some cheering on the scientific advancements and others wary of the economic and social implications. Baby octopus grows hundreds of mysterious organs Sometimes discoveries are made which scientists simply have no answer for. Recently, Researchers have been investigating octopuses and the strange phenomena that occurs when they are young. When it comes to humans and many other animal species, the organs that we are born with are the ones that we have all of our lives, albeit not without a fair amount of growth and development throughout the lifespan. However, it seems that baby octopuses do not adhere to these rules, not by a long shot. Before octopuses are born, they are covered in hundreds of tiny organs that spread across every surface of their bodies, including even the innermost nooks, crannies, and pockets of skin. What is truly incredible is that these hundreds of organs are so small as to be microscopic, and they are entirely temporary. Known as Kulika's organs, or KOs, they cover the skin of the baby octopus in a broom-like formation that occasionally appears to be a small, folded umbrella. These umbrella-like additions are all capable of opening and blooming into a dandelion of bristle fibers, 
and then, for reasons that remain entirely mysterious to scientists, these KOs disappear long before the octopus reaches adulthood, never to be seen again. Recently, a study was conducted that attempted to get to the bottom of the purpose of KOs and discern what advantage they imparted on the young octopus. They also discovered that each KO organism is a uniform size, and when they bloomed into their fully expanded size, they increased the overall surface area of the octopus by up to two-thirds. This has led researchers to hypothesize that the function of the KO has its roots in increasing the surface area of the octopus so that the surface-to-volume ratio also increases, which could prove useful when navigating the currents and even acting as a rudimentary propulsion mechanism for the young sea creatures. This would be useful for energy conservation and mobility, but so far there is little evidence to confirm this function as the true purpose of the KOs. Another hypothesis that resulted from the careful study of the mysterious microscopic organs suggests that the bloomed KOs can refract the light that filters through the ocean waves in much the same way that a prism would do. This would make them harder to spot and act as a form of camouflage, which would be especially useful when they are so young and vulnerable. The study also found that many of these octopus species that made their home in the dark depths of the ocean where light does not often reach never develop KOs further supporting the camouflage hypothesis as a light refracting mechanism would be useless at such dark depths. However, the study was unable to pin down the exact cause of these strange organs, and it seems that their purpose is a secret that science will keep for a while longer. But what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.